<laughs> okay, just get in there, just keep your character. Right? So in there, do the old walkie stick thing, just, just keep your character. Right? So this footage is from back in 2016 when my friend Dave and I got together for a bit of a fun photo shoot to turn him into Carl from Disney's Up movie. Why? Well why not, it was great fun and I learned a lot by experimenting. Now back when I originally did this, this was the final image that I came up with, with the background drawn by our friend Aaron Blaze, who did actually work at Disney for over 20 years. Anyway, Photoshop has moved on a fair bit since then, so I thought it would be interesting to see how I could use the updates to change Dave's face, because before it took a lot of time and a lot of layers. Now in the description I've included a link so that you can download the exact same file and follow along. So let's have a play, let's have some fun, and let's just see how much easier it is to recreate that look using some of the tools in Photoshop, including some more recent updates. All right, so with the image open in Photoshop, let's just dive in, have some fun experimenting with some filters and tools. But best practice, as always, we've got our image open, we've got the background layer. Let's just create a copy of that by holding down the Command key on Mac, Control key on Windows and pressing J, just so that our original image is nice and safe. And we'll just rename this one to Dave. Then what we'll do is we'll go to the filter menu and we're gonna take a look at this one here called Neural Filters. This is fairly new into Photoshop and basically what it is, it's a collection now of new functionality that we have within Photoshop that is basically meaning we don't need to purchase third party plugins to do things like colorizing black and white images, skin smoothing and so on. Now when you dive into the neural filters, there are different sections. The top one here says featured. These are fully functional utilities within Photoshop that you can use. Underneath that, you've got the beta, which is ones that are kind of almost there. We can use them, but there may be a few little glitches in them. And also at the top here, we have the section hall called waitlist. These are ones that Adobe are proposing to bring in to Photoshop. Uh, none of these you can use at the moment, but you can let them know that you're interested. But let's dive back to the all filters. We're gonna use the one called Smart Portrait. If you've never used it, you might find you have one of these little cloud download icons. If you click on that moments later, you'll then be able to click to turn it on and have access to all the functionality. Now there's lots of things you can do in here. We're gonna just play around with this one here called Facial Age. To the right makes Dave older, to the left makes him younger. And I'd really recommend that you play around with this just to see what results you get. But for this one, I'm gonna take it at the moment to plus 50. When you use these sliders, you'll notice then you get this progress bar that says processing in the cloud. What's happening now is Photoshop is sending this file up into the cloud looking for similar images that it has in its brain where the person looks older. It'll then take those parts, use some of them and blend them into our image just as it has now to make him look a little bit older. And it does work really well. There are some little glitches with it, but it is in the beta section. Now you can see straight away, his hair's got grayer. We've got more lines. For some reason, I'm really intrigued as to why this is, but they've also given him what looks like an ear stud. I have no idea why. But as results go, that's not bad first of all. So that's the maximum we can make Dave look older using the neural filters. Or is it? This is what's great about experimenting. What we can do now is come out of neural filters and then go into it again and then apply that setting. But when we go out of here, one thing what I'm gonna do is at the bottom where it says output, we've got a few options. One of them is here saying smart filter. Now ideally we want to work non-destructively, meaning that later on down the line, if for whatever reason, we want to change some of the settings that we applied on our image, when we use smart filters, we can do that. We can dive in, change the settings without having done, or without having to redo lots of steps. So we'll choose smart filter and we'll click okay. Photoshop process it, sends it back into uh, the, the layer stack. And you can see here, neural filters, where it says smart filters here. If I just double clicked on that, it would then send me back into that particular filter area where you can see the original sliders that I used, which I could then reduce or whatever. I'm quite happy with them as they are because what we're now going to do is go back into filter and apply a brand new neural filter. So we'll click on it from there. We're gonna go to the smart portrait, but because we're using a new one, we have to turn it on again to allow us to access all these functions. 
we'll go back to the facial age. I'll take it right over to the right hand side, but I'm going to not go fully to plus 50. Let's go for around about sort of 30, 35, something like that. Let that progress bar go to the end while it processes it in the cloud to see how much older we can make Dave look. Now, what I find really interesting with this is that as it's made him look older, it's also made his ears longer, which apparently does happen for men as they get older. Still got that ear stood, but that's looking pretty good. The mouth is looking okay, but we're going to fix that in a different filter in a moment. We'll leave it where it says Smart Filter. We'll click OK, send it back over into Photoshop, and you can see now we're not adding more and more layers. We're just adding all these different filters here that we're using within that one layer. And that's really going to help keep the actual file size down. Photoshop's going to love you for doing that. So now what we'll do then, let's go to the filter menu and now we'll dive into Liquify. Now in Liquify, over on the right hand side, you're going to notice all these different settings that you can play around with for changing faces. We've got eyes, nose, mouth and face shape. If you don't see these, over on the left hand side where the toolbar is, click on this little face or head icon there, that'll then activate them. If you had more than one head in the picture, you would see those listed here as face one, two, three, four, and so on. But let's just have some fun. Let's just dive in, open up some of these settings here. We've got nose, mouth, and we'll go for face shape. Uh, let's first of all make his, uh, sm if, let's just close his mouth actually if we can. So we'll play with this upper lip. Let's just bring that over to the left a touch. Then we've got the lower lip. Let's bring that up. And then we've got mouth height. You can see there, look look at that. I can just close his mouth down just by using those three sliders, which works a treat. We'll give him a little bit less of a smile and we'll increase the mouth width because in the character in the film, his mouth is really, really quite wide. We can then come to the face head. We can make his forehead come down or actually make it even higher, but we'll bring it down just a little bit. We'll also change the jawline to give it a much squarer jawline by dragging out to the right-hand side. Already that is working, an absolute treat. Let's just play with the chin height. We can bring that up as well. He's got a very square jaw in the character. And we could even play with the face width just by playing around with this. So you can see how easy this is to really start to push the faces around to kind of cartoonify them. Now, the actual character as well had quite a bulbous nose. And that's what took quite a long time in the original edit. But this is how we can do it in here. I'll first of all go to the nose width. And you can see straight away how that's affecting it. But I can also dive over to the left hand side where we have these tools here. Now the one that we'd probably use by default is at the very top called the forward warp tool. And the way we use that is we bring our cursor onto the image, we click down and we can move and we can start to push and pull pixels around. But what you'll notice is I do that, even though I'm clicking down on the middle of the nose, everywhere else around it is going to start to be affected. So we don't really want that. What we can do though instead is come over to the toolbar again and click on this little icon here called the freeze mask tool. If I click on that, then I can adjust the size of the freeze mask tool using the right and left square bracket keys. And I can brush over areas with this red overlay to protect them. So anywhere that's now covered with this red overlay won't be affected when I use other tools within the liquify area. So I only want to play around with the nose at the moment. So let's just make sure the areas around it are nice and safe. All right, so now look, if I actually got my forward warp tool again, then click on the nose and move it around, can you see how nothing else underneath that red overlay is being altered? But I will just use the forward warp tool now just to kind of push the pixels around just a little bit. Square off his nose just there, something like that. And also over on the left hand side, we have this great tool here called the bloat tool. And there's one called the pucker tool. Now the bloat tool is, is great for making things bigger. All we need to do is just press down. And as we keep it pressed down, areas then start to get bigger and bigger and bigger. The pucker tool is the complete opposite. You hold it on top and it'll shrink them down. The great thing is because the shape of it, which is circular, when you press down to make things bigger or the pucker tool to make things smaller, it does it in proportion all the way around. Rather than using like the forward warp tool trying to push it, this just does it in one go. So it's really, really cool. So we'll use that bloat tool. I'll increase the size of it using the right square bracket key and I'll just press down on the nose. You can see as I do that, how it starts to make the nose really start to bloat out. And that character did have quite a, a bulbous nose. Great thing again, we're not affecting any area around it because we've got used that freeze mask tool. Just get the forward warp tool. Let's just bring the nose over to the left just a little bit. There we go, something like that. We can now use the unfreeze mask tool just to brush on there 
so you can see what we've got so far. Really, really easy to do this. Now these settings here over on the right hand side, the nose width, the mouth width, they're at their maximum now. So just like before we use the neural filters, we can double up on them by going out and then back in. So let's just click OK. Photoshop then brings it back into the layer stack. But let's now add a new liquify. So we'll go to filter and we'll go to liquify. Dive back into those settings here. Let's make that mouth wider yet again. And we'll take that smile down. And I might just dial up that nose width. There we go to really kind of bloat it out. Something like that. Click OK. And I'm going to do one more on the mouth. So let's go filter, liquify. And I want to take that mouth just a little bit wider. So we'll go to mouth width all the way over to the right hand side. And then click OK. Absolutely love it. Now, next thing I think I'm going to do is the actual character in the movie had a very flattened off bottom to his jaw there. And Dave's got a bit of a curve to it. So let's just sort that out. And all I'm going to do is just get my freehand lasso tool and I'll make a very loose selection going around his head like this, like so. So now we can see the marching ants. I'm going to copy that up onto its own layer by holding down the command key on Mac, control key on Windows and pressing J. That now is up on its own layer, and you can see that now over in the layer stack. We'll then go to the filter menu, choose liquify, and to square that jaw off, all I'm going to do, let's just zoom in a little bit, I'm going to get that freeze mask tool, and I'm going to brush over the mouth. I do not want to affect the mouth at all, so I'll just brush over it to make sure it's nice and safe. I'll then get the forward warp tool, but instead of me using it as a, like a small brush and pushing up little bits like this, that's really difficult to do because as you push up, you're going to get like a ripple effect. So the best way to do that and to make it look much more realistic is to use a bigger brush. So I'm going to use the right square bracket key, make it a lot bigger and then push up and it's going to do areas all at once. It's going to be easy to do. It's going to look much more realistic. Something like that will be fine. Let's get that freeze, unfreeze mask tool, brush off so we can see what we've done. And just for good measure, let's just make that smile down a little bit more and you make use of that wide mouth, something like that. We'll click OK. That sends it back over into Photoshop. Obviously, it's not lined up at the minute, but what we could do as well, let's just make it a little bit bigger. Let's just go to Edit and Free Transform. We've got the handles there. Let's just stretch it out just a little bit, a little bit bigger head. There we go. And I'll use the move tool, drag it down to maybe around about there. And we just need to use a mask now to blend this in. So let's just add a layer mask to this head area here. I'll get a brush, a normal round soft brush. Make sure the brush hardness is just really soften it down, making sure the foreground color is black because we're now going to paint away parts of this upper layer here that we don't want to see to reveal the layer below. So let's just quickly come in here, doing a real quick job brushing around so you can kind of see the results we can get. But this is really, really quick to do and great fun and a great way of learning how those other tools work for when you have to use them in a serious job. Let's just zoom out. In fact, let me just sort that bit at the top. I'll just add a blank layer, get the brush, and I'll just hold down my option key to sample the color next to it. And I'll just do a very down and dirty way, just removing it like so. But let's just zoom out. There's before and after before and after and the original one that I played with when I was curious to see how I'd do it is that one there so again we can go before after before and after now I've always believed that the best way to learn is by making whatever you're doing just making it fun photography and photoshop by the very nature of what it is can be really serious but the most I've ever learned over the years was when I just put together something that was fun and just did it for the <laughs> and the giggles but anyway, that's enough from me. I, in fact, no, hold on a second, my t-shirt. Check out the design. This is by my sister, Cara, who actually is an artist and creates some great designs that go on clothing. So do me a favor, check out her Threadless store. She's really good. The link is in the description. Anyway, as always, I'd appreciate a thumbs up. And if you haven't already, click on that subscribe button because it's just a great free way that you can support this channel. But for now, that's me. I'm done. Go grab yourselves a free pass for the Photoshop Virtual Summit that starts on the 2nd of May. Free pass is still available until midday on that day, as are the reduced price VIP passes. But for now, I'm done. I'll see you in the next video.